Good morning, Colby. Good morning, how are you? I am doing great. Um, we are so excited to have you because we've been singing the song in the office you know, all week long. <laughs> but uh, You just sang it for me, I loved it. It made my whole morning. <laughs> aw. All right, let's go back through your life here. Uh, you're a California girl and you had music prominently in your family. Tell us about your dad. Yeah, so my dad was one of the producers of Fleetwood Mac's Rumors and Task albums. And so, you know, growing up, I was just around music and, and I always loved singing. And so my parents gave me all the tools. If you want to be a singer, you know, you should learn how to play an instrument and become a songwriter. And then you can have this long career with that. So um, because my my parents knew so much about it, I really feel like I they gave me that foundation to to have a, a fair chance, you yeah. know? In fact, your dad, Ken, uh, that, that rumors won a Grammy. Was there a Grammy in your house? There, yes, and I will, I'm so ashamed to say we had like parties when we were younger, of course, in high school, and we broke my dad's Grammy oh. by having like a huge party. <laughs> I know it's he they were so upset, but he forgave me. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, you said something really important there. Your parents uh, also instilled in you not to just be a singer, but to also expand that craft, be a songwriter, you know, also be a musician. Yes. Yeah. I think because they were around, you know, music and Fleetwood Mac and they were watching the artists write all the time. And my dad loved songwriting. He knew it's you could tell a story. And for me, it's it's therapeutic. I like as the writer, I get to write about what I'm going through in life and it feels like this huge release. But then the best part is when people from all over the world listen to my songs and it helps them through a breakup or a divorce or a loss or you know, a soundtrack to them falling in love. So that's like what keeps me doing it and, and loving writing. Yeah, well, like with Bubbly, it just makes us happy. Uh, when was <laughs> the first time you got up on stage and performed in front of people? Um, you know, I did some school talent shows when I was uh, in fifth and sixth grade. Uh, I sang Killing Me Softly with some girlfriends, and that was when I first did it. But I got I had to get encouraged because I was so shy and quiet that I never wanted to be the one that went up and sang. I, I always had to be like highly encouraged and still kind of do to this day. It's never something that I'm just like, let me up on that stage. It's always <laughs> like some, you know, some encouragement. Yeah, you were encouraged by uh, Lauren Hill singing uh, Killing Me Softly and Sister Act too. I It reminds me of, like, I actually interviewed Roberta Flack and years ago, <gasps> oh yes, I actually, actually sang a, a little bit of it to her and that was like such a bucket list <laughs> moment. It was so cool, beautiful song. All right, so that stage yeah. fright, that stage fright could have derailed you to the point where you would have been a musician and a songwriter, nothing wrong with that. But uh, you say that the stage fright was partly responsible for when you went to American Idol twice and got turned down twice. When we say turned down, we don't mean that the judges turned you down because you didn't really make it in front of the judges, did you? I didn't even make it there. You know, there's like a line outside with thousands of people and they kind of interview you right there outside. And I, to be honest, like I was shy. I wasn't very, like, again, I had to be encouraged to go audition for Idol. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't that I got turned down that made me insecure. It was, I feel like the industry at that time, I felt like every everyone was like kind of picked on or, um, you know, it was just like you had to be perfect in all the ways. And I felt like all those heightened insecurities came with being a female in the entertainment industry. So um, I had to, you know, from being like the shy, quiet girl to then now being a performer and having to be on TV. And it was just this kind of traumatizing, terrifying experience. <laughs> but I had to, I had to, I, it was this amazing opportunity as well. And you know, I got a therapist and I had all these things that kind of helped me uh, kind of find my own and feel comfortable in my skin, you know, performing for people. Yeah, yeah. And the, the irony of the whole thing is you uh, sang Bubbly, which went on to win a Grammy, of course, and then six time platinum. It's it's just it's such a you have you're you have lots of great life lessons for people to learn. And the yeah. other one is you were part of that group. Uh, it used to be a time that if a big record company did not a record label sign you, then, you know, you're basically just kind of out there on the road playing to whoever you could. But this thing called social media changed everything. Share with people who don't know uh, what happened, that fateful moment when a friend of yours said, you know, make you a MySpace page. Honestly, I had no idea what social media was. I don't think anyone really knew at the time. And I just had these demos recorded and he put a few of them up on MySpace. He made me a page. And because of that, people started 
seeing my music and following me and I became there was like a unsigned artist and a signed artist chart and I became the number one unsigned artist and then I got offered a record deal all within like a year span and then I went on tour with the Goo Goo Dolls and Lifehouse and it was just this whirlwind of a uh, just like like I just got propelled into it. It was, I'm so grateful too. Yeah, yeah. When was the first moment you realized when, when someone either came up to you or said, you're the girl who sings the... The bubbly song. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think we'd be out at restaurants and I would hear bubbly on or we'd be out places and people would come up and, and say, and I just, I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't register that people knew me from, that it was real, that my music was out there. Yeah, so the debut album, Coco, which probably was on over 15 billion streams. The second album to break through, hit number one billboard, uh, platinum records, the whole bit. And as I said earlier, the rest is history. Now, as we know, Colby, a good country song usually involves a truck, a dog, and a breakup. I don't know if you had a truck or a dog, but the breakup actually did serve as a foundation for your latest album along the way. Before we get to that album, uh, the move to Nashville. Y country had always kind of, you know, I think if you're a good songwriter your, your song can show up in any genre right and and your your music was always been kind of cross genre anyway but what was behind the move to Nashville you know I've, I'm born and raised in Southern California I grew up just only going to Hawaii and I wanted to try living somewhere different and I was coming here writing and collaborating with country artists and I wanted to try living somewhere new and so I thought it was the perfect place I could work and have friends and it was the best decision I love this town I love this city I feel like I live life fully here and I fell in love with country music and um, just a whole life shift. Yeah, yeah, you debuted the group Gone West, a pop country group, uh, so you were taken off there and then things kind of fell apart. The band fell, fell apart or broke up, I should just say, not fell apart. And then after 10 <laughs> years of dating, you had a broken engagement, but what you said earlier was like when you write a song and then you perform that song, you're much more connected to it through your personal experiences. And so uh, you, you took some time and allowed yourself to heal first. I did, you know, with songwriting, it takes me a while sometimes. I feel like I have to live life and sit and let everything digest. And then, um, you know, eight months into the pandemic, I wrote my first song for this new record. And uh, it is a breakup album, but I really felt like in th this time around, I wanted to say everything with gratitude and love and what we learned from each other. And and I'm still hopeful for what's to come uh, because it wasn't a bad breakup. It wasn't, nothing was bad. It was just the time, you know? Um, and so I feel like this song or this album was healing for me to write. And I've, I've, I've heard from people, it's helping them through their losses that they're going through, which is like, it's just, that's the best news. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to like it with Breathe, and that was kind of like not necessarily a romantic breakup, but a breakup of a friendship. But at, at any rate, you know, it, it, people come into each other's lives, I think sometimes to teach a lesson or for you to learn a lesson or both. And then once the lesson is learned, you, you move on, right? You move through. At, but you also touched on, I love the, the, with music and songs, how they become so personal to people. Of course, every time you break up with somebody is the minute that breakup song comes on the radio, right? <laughs> but uh, for people, to, they reached out to you and would say, oh thank you for this and thank you for that and it helped me get through something uh, along the way tell us about this uh, debut country solo uh, so yeah I, I released in October um, some of my like my favorite song on the record is called wide open and it's just about this new way that I'm living life with being okay with what happens you know I feel like it, we're, we're taught that things are supposed to always be permanent, but it's actually a lot of stuff in life is temporary. And I think the more we become okay with that and comfortable with it, I think everything can get a little bit easier. So that's uh, the tone of the record and, and how I'm, I'm living now. Yeah, you have a collaboration with someone you admired for your Cheryl Crow. Does she, live, she lives down the street and around the corner for me. She really does. She lives like five minutes away and I got to tour with her many years ago. And a few years ago, I asked if she would uh, sing on my record and sing on a song and she said yes. So we just did that this summer and I love her. She's an angel. She's just this wonderful, warm woman. Uh, I was so grateful she said yes to working with me and uh, doing this song that means so much. Yeah. You're coming to the Houston area soon and you'll have a concert. Uh, so what can fans expect? 
So it's a, a very stripped down show. It's just a three piece and I'm gonna be playing a lot of my old songs, some new songs, a couple fun covers. And um, I've been, you know, this new album is a country album and I feel like it's just been this natural progression, this natural fit. So having the steel guitar and the dobro and the banjo. So we're mixing that into my shows now and it's my favorite way of performing. Yeah, when you say just a three piece and it's your favorite way of performing because you can do that, right? There are so many times when we can't hear that good, pretty, pure voice because, you know, it's kind of drowned off with it with the instruments you it's harder have to sing when there's a lot yeah yeah you have that ability you have that voice we have a, a lot of folks in Houston because we're a very uh, art centered and theater centered uh, community we have a lot of folks who would love to be where you are uh, your best advice to how to make it in the business I think if you can really learn who you are as an artist and um, master every part of the craft. So if you're, you know, learn how to play whatever instrument, um, just practice all the time. Um, take vocal lessons so you're a strong singer. So even if you're tired on the road, you're not getting sick and worn out. The business side is a huge factor too because you're gonna be working with your team and business managers and managers and labels. And if you're able to hold your own and know exactly who you are as an artist, it can make it go, it, there's just so much, you know, there's so much growing that you do and there's so much uh, advice coming in that you need to know whether it's right for you or not. You need to know when it's time to expand or when, no, that's not me, you yeah. know, and I think that's that would that's key yeah and 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 learning the lesson that you know you learned early on uh, unintentionally that you know put it out there on social media because you have an audience out there whether you can see them or not there's an audience out there and really it's just it, not about the not about the I, I think sometimes so many people go oh you know I just want to be famous and make all this money you got to love what yeah. you do and the rest will follow. Love what you do and start performing live like just be be comfortable with it and get out there yeah, you know, we yeah. love you, Colby, so we're going to follow you wherever you go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much and can't wait to see you. Yeah.